Welcome to the build of the Innov Antennas LFA3 6 meter loop fed array antenna here at WX0V. I want to discuss the part number of this antenna straight up here. When I purchased this in the summer of 2022, it was the LFA 3, which confused me since it was a four element antenna, but you can clearly see four element 50 megahertz LFA 3. In the summer of 2023, the Inn of Antennas website shows that the part number is now 50LFA-4-LN. So there must have been a part number change. The LFA-3 is now indicated to be a three element antenna, but I suspect the build is very similar to the four element version. For this video and the follow up testing and install video, I will refer to the part number as LFA-3. My build got off to a rocky start as when the antenna arrived, the packaging was damaged. This can happen when traveling long distances, in this case from the United Kingdom to Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. I held the delivery driver to make sure all the parts were there and that none of them were damaged. In this case, all was okay, so it was on to the build. Here are the components to assemble the antenna. The boom is comprised of two aluminum squared sections. One is 1,873 millimeters, or 74 inches long. The second is 1,473 millimeters, or 58 and a quarter inches long. Here are the five center sections. They're 998 millimeters slash 39 and a quarter inches long each. They're almost identical except for this one here has got two screws in it, and that's the center section for driven element one. So that'll differentiate that from the other four. Noteworthy inside of four out of the five of these are these components here. And these are 33 and a quarter inches or 846 millimeters. And these are the elements for the driven element number one and number two. Six more aluminum tubes to discuss. First of all, the longest of these six are the reflector elements. And they're 1126 millimeters or 44 and a half inches long. Next size down is Director 1, two elements for that, and the measurements there are 988 millimeters or 39 inches long. And finally, Director 2 elements, there's two of those, and they're 861 millimeters or 34 inches long. These six elements are open on one end and have plastic end caps on the other. Here are the two loop ends that go into Driven Element 1 and Driven Element 2. Finally, we have three bags of parts, and I like the way Innov Antennas separates these. Bag one has parts to mount your antenna to the mast. Bag two focuses on parts to assemble your antenna, including elements to the boom. And bag three has parts to assemble the boom. I really like these Ziploc bags that Innov Antennas uses. Helps keep the parts nicely organized. The instruction manual has some issues. One of the more interesting things was the lack of detail on how to assemble the elements. Nowhere in the narrative or even in illustrations does it show you how to build the two directors, the two driven elements, or the reflector. What you do is you go by the antenna layout and then you work with the parts list that's in the back of the assembly manual. There is some detail here and the assembly manual is not a complete loss but more detail and less confusion would have been helpful. The part numbers you'll be working with are rather long. In fact, the aluminum block for driven element number two is part number EAHYP016A. To build the LFA-3, it is best to have access to both a metric and an imperial tool set. I'm going to start my build by adding the center sections to the unassembled boom. And there are drill holes for each element. This is the end of the shorter section of the boom. I guess this would be the lead, although it's director two, which is somewhat confusing because director number one is behind director two on the longer section of the boom. But the holes are already pre-drilled, so that's no issue. So here's driven element number two driven element number one, and finally at the end of the long section of the boom, 
goes the reflector. The assembly guide does give you these dimensions, but since the hole's already pre-drilled, it's irrelevant. You really can't make a mistake there. Here are the insulator blocks which hold the elements to the boom. Now most of these are these green plastic ones. And this is part number EAHYP016. The exception are these two aluminum ones. And these are used only on driven element number two. And this is part number EAHYP016A. This is director number two on the short section of the boom. It's the only element that goes on the short section. And we're going to start by grabbing one of the insulator blocks and lining up the two holes with the two drill holes on the boom itself. Then we're going to add the center section, the center element. And then we're going to grab a second insulator block and match that up there. We're going to finish this off by using two S912-9640, which is an Allen DIN 912 bolt. And we can just tuck those right in here like this. We won't, don't want to tighten this down all the way quite yet because we want to make sure that before this is tightened down, the element is properly centered. These bolts require a hex key set. It's probably best to have a metric, but if you don't, I found my 3 16 imperial measured hex key fits it quite well. Three things to note before we tighten this down. First of all, apply some Penetrox to the bolt. If you have to disassemble the antenna years down the road, it could assist in that process. Secondly, do not tighten these until the center section is perfectly centered on the boom. The measurement I came up with from the edge of the block to the end of the center elements is 19 inches, which is approximately 483 millimeters. Last, we do not want to over tighten these two bolts. They could crack the center insulators. Get them good and snug, but don't over tighten them. Once the center section is secure, now we're going to finish director number two. We're going to use two 34 inch or 861 millimeter long aluminum tubes. And we're going to use two of part number P0100033 hose clamps, or as they say in England, Jubilee clips. We'll take one of the clamps, place it over the center section, and then after applying Penetrox to the open end of the 34 inch tube, we'll slide that into the open end of the center section and we'll secure this with the hose clamp which just uses a flathead screwdriver. Now there's a certain length this needs to be so let's take a look at that now. For director 2, the distance from the open end of the center section here to the end of the element should be 781 millimeters or approximately 30 and 3 quarter inches. Complete this procedure on the opposite side and director number two is complete. The build for director one is almost identical to the build for director two. So I'm not going to show that process on video, but I am going to touch base on the differences. First off, director one is located on the longer of the two boom sections towards the open end. The very opposite end of this would be where the reflector goes. Although it uses the same center element, 998 millimeters or 39 and a quarter inches long, it does use longer elements for the completion of director number one. And these are 988 millimeters or 39 inches long. Otherwise, it's going to use the same plastic insulators, same Jubilee clips, and same bolts as director two. The element tip length for director number one should be 888 millimeters or approximately 35 inches. And that's the distance from the end of the center section to the end of the element tube. We have a similar situation here with the reflector. It's located on the very end of the two longer boom sections on the capped end. It uses the exact same 998 millimeter or 39 and a quarter inch center section used on the directors. However, there is a difference with these elements that comprise the remainder of the reflector. They're longer yet. In fact, these are 1126 millimeters long or 44 and a half inches long each. Otherwise, the hardware used to assemble the reflector is exactly the same as the two directors. 
The element tip length on the reflector is 1,026 millimeters, or approximately 40 and a half inches on each side. On driven element one, things at least on my build have become very foggy. The instructions say the driven element section of the loop closest to the reflector, and that's where DE1 is, it's the reflector is not far away, has a small plate with two white insulators, one on either side of the feed point. Well, this is the dipole center plate, which is part number EA0105 alpha 6 or 5A6. Do you see two white insulators on here at all? I don't. It's just aluminum plate. So I assume where it goes is right here. Now they're to be fastened by part number S9129620, which are right here. There are three of them. There's only supposed to be two. Now maybe they just gave one extra. But there's washers in here that aren't listed at all here in the narrative and they're not shown in the illustrations. For my build I elected to use the washers which are part number S9021-96 and secured them with the S9129620 bolts. Before I introduce the center element for driven element number one I want to talk about the insulators and the securing hardware. The insulators are the same plastic insulators we used on the director and the reflector. We're also going to use the same bolts that we used on those, but now we're going to introduce these nuts, which are the DIN 985s as shown here on the destructions. And those are S985-906 as far as their part number. Now we've brought in the 998 millimeter or 39 and a quarter inch center section, but as you can see, this one's different from the other ones because we've got the feed point screws right here. And so now we'll use the insulating blocks, the bolts, and these nuts to secure this. You can use the same 3 sixteenths of an inch hex key to tighten these bolts. I secured these nuts with a 10 millimeter socket. After securing the center section of driven element one, I've elected to secure the center section of driven element 2, which is located between driven element 1 and director number 1. Now it's easy enough to start with. It uses the same 998 millimeter or 39 and a quarter inch long center section as was used in the reflectors and two directors. And now we're going to introduce the aluminum clamping blocks or insulating blocks, which are part number EAHYP016A. But here's where it starts to get confusing. The instructions here on driven element 2 say ground screw for front of loop center of insulator. And they point to the center of the insulator and you can see there's a white dot there indicating some sort of screw I would think because it says ground screw. Well here are the insulators and there is no screw in the center. And the center element also is not featuring any type of screw. What I elected to do was secure driven element 2 in the same fashion that I secured the other elements with, with the exception of using aluminum insulating blocks versus the plastic ones. This is starting to look like a beam. The next step in the driven elements 1 and 2 is to add the 846 millimeter 33 and a quarter inch aluminum tubes to the four open sections. As you can see, there's two open sections per side. In my hands are one of the 33 and a quarter inch tubes. Now notice this end has slits in it, whereas the opposite end does not. This is the end that you want to insert into the center sections of driven element one and two. You will take a Jubilee clip, slide it on the open end of the center section, in this case of driven element one, and then we'll slide our 33 and a quarter inch tube in there. Before the final build, of course, we would put Penetrox on that, and we'll secure the Jubilee clip with a flathead screwdriver. Complete that on the other end of driven element one, and the two open ends of the center section of driven element two. 
Just like the other elements in the build, driven element one and two have a certain distance we want this new tube inserted at. And in this case, it's 746 millimeters or 29.37 inches, just over 29 inches of length from the open end of the center section to the end of the element. But of course, now we see one other element coming into play here. It is time now to introduce the loop end of the LFA, which makes this such a unique antenna. Now there's two of these sections. They go on either side of the driven elements, and they'll attach to the open sections of driven element one and driven element two, as represented by these two tubes. Now these are loose, they're not attached to the center section right now, because I simply don't have enough room in my kitchen to complete this and show you at the same time. So, much like Mike M0MSN, I build my antennas in the kitchen. We use Jubilee clips, the same ones we've used before, and we just insert the loop end into the open end of each driven element. Make sure there's Penetrox on there, and then secure that with the Jubilee clip with a flathead screwdriver. The element tip length for the loop end for driven elements one and two is 30 millimeters, which is just over an inch. However, this is what will be adjusted to change your SWR depending on your installation. So leave these somewhat loose until you have your SWR nailed down. Given the broadband nature of six meters, my suspicion is the suggested lengths given here in the assembly manual will probably work out just fine. Matching the two boom pieces together is a very simple process. We want to join these two ends together and we'll facilitate that by introducing part number EA010043. They're calling it a joint. It's basically kind of a bracket here. And we'll slide that on to the boom, making sure the holes line up. We'll do this on this side now. And once the holes are lined up, we will grab parts S9339616 and part S9021-96. One is a bolt, one's a washer, and we'll just screw those in. Now we would apply Penetrox to this before the final build, of course. And once you've got one side done, then you grab the other half of the boom and just slide it right in until the holes match up and bring in some more bolts and more washers and then the boom will be assembled. The socket size required for the bracket bolts is 10 millimeters. Here's a look at it when it's all finished. Nice and clean, and it feels rather sturdy. We'll now talk about the mass plate, which is part number EA013019. Based on the assembly manual, they want the mass plate located at 1925 millimeters from the end of the reflector here, or the very end of the boom. The boom is 11 feet long in imperial measurements, so what I did was split it in half and put the mass plate at 5 feet 6 inches. The assembly guide shows the mass plate on the right side of the boom. Probably doesn't matter. You could probably put it on either side. Here are the U-bolts or the square 35 millimeter clamps, part number P0500035. Both of mine were just slightly out of tolerance, and I just pulled them apart by hand a little bit and then they slid on the boom with no problem. To secure the U-bolts, we'll use four of part number S934-98, the nuts, and four of part S127-98, washers. Those get secured with a 10 millimeter socket. Please note there appears to be a typo here on the part number for the washer. They've got it as S9021-96, but I believe that is incorrect. Here's a quick look at the longer section of the boom with some of the elements just slid into place. They're not secured yet. We can see the reflector here at the very bottom and you can see the driven elements one and two here with the loop ends attached. And at the end of the longer section of the boom right here we can see director number one. I would love to complete the build here. However, I'm certain you've heard the term bull in a china shop. Well, the ham radio equivalent is LFA in the kitchen. To assist with the element tip length, I pre-measured them and marked them with a Sharpie. I'm sure by now you're sick and tired of hearing about Penetrox, but here's the deal. 
When I took apart my 15-year-old Mosley T33 Jr., it came apart perfectly, except where I didn't use Penetrox, and some of those sections didn't come apart at all. So I am definitely a believer in this. I report you decide. It's your antenna, not mine, but I would use this nasty, gnarly stuff on the joining sections and in the hardware. Just saying. And if you wear gloves and are very careful, you will not get a single spot of Penetrox on your Chase Elliott 2020 NASCAR Championship t-shirt. And just like on the insulators, on the hose clamps or Jubilee clips, whichever you prefer to call them, get them good and snug, but don't go crazy here. No reason to crank on this. Just get them good and snug. It's not going to go anywhere. Here are a few looks at the fully assembled end of Antenna's LFA-3. Two observations before I close the video. First off, the engineering on the end of antennas LFA-3 is outstanding, truly world-class. These parts went together beautifully, and aside from a very minor issue with the U-bolt, this was simply the finest antenna build I have had to date. On the flip side, we have the assembly manual, which clearly needs improvement. Hopefully this will happen for those who purchase this antenna in the future. If you've enjoyed watching this, please check out the LFA-3 testing and install video, also found on this YouTube channel. This completes the build of the Inn of Antennas LFA-3. Thanks for watching in 73 from Whiskey X-Ray Zero Victoria.